favorite section, which is the hearts and minds section. As I said, we have both Princess Lockeroo, Samara Cohen, and Michael Garner. We're going to start with Samara. How are you, Samara? Are you there? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Hey, Samantha, I, I do want to show a video to show people who Princess Lockero is. It's a short video, so before you have us share the screen, I'd love to show this if that's possible, okay? Absolutely. All right. You're so amazing, by the way. Everybody should hire Samantha. You wouldn't think that you need a Zoom producer. She's amazing. Samantha, put your, in, uh, your info in the chat. How's that? So like I said... Princess Lockeroo was just in the New York Times literally last week. And if you remember, it's the song from the beginning. It was one of the first whacking anthems. So remember? And she's not the only one, but she's causing all those to actually get to this point. And I'm just going to give you, because... Zoom still sucks in terms of performativity. And uh, we uh, can't have Princess Lockeru perform for us because it sucks. But I could show this. Zoom, get it together. <laughs> so your stock could go up even more. All right. Here we go. Princess Lakaru, entertainer, producer, activist, educator, and queen of whacking, bears the Soul Train legacy at the forefront of the whacking revolution. Whacking is a dance that restores mental and physical health. Whacking replaces the thought of, I am not enough, with I can do and be anything. Whacking is sensual without objectification. Whacking is powerful, but not intimidating. Whacking bridges the gap between cultures. Whacking builds communities. Whacking changes lives. In the past, black people were depicted on television as gangsters, drug dealers, pimps, and prostitutes. With Soul Train's arrival, black people were shown with integrity. The culture of Soul Train enabled them to feel proud, loved, and respected while celebrating their artistry. Soul Train was a platform for up and coming black artists to be seen on a national level. Whacking was born in the gay clubs of LA in the 1970s. It flourished on Soul Train and lives on in the hearts and lives of thousands of people across the globe. Within the global whacking community, interactions are not objectified sexually or fueled by substance abuse. They are driven by the connection to ourselves and each other through love, unity, music, and dance. All right. You know what, Samara? That's such a great video. All right, uh, Sam, I'm totally cool to just have me and Samara on the screen. Or Princess Lockeroo. By the way, it's Princess Lockeroo with three O's. That's right, because I'm a triple threat. <laughs> oh, explain. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a background in musical theater, and so, you know, I sing, dance, act, but whacking is, um, whacking is my life. <laughs> All right, so you kind of told us about whacking. What is it really? And I, obviously, it's a dance form. Right. What does it represent? Well, How did it get started? Well, whacking was born out of the gay clubs. It was originated by gay Black men. And it uh, was born out of the oppression faced by gay Black men at the time. You know, it, um, and it was really just a dance and an expression of, of, of who you really are inside. It was, a, it was a platform to be yourself without judgment. And so this was, was this happening before Soul Train, the show? Well, I believe Soul Train started in 71. Mm -hmm. um, whacking started around the same time in the gay clubs of LA. And my teacher- All black? Hmm? 
Hmm? All, all black gay men? Black and Hispanic. Black and Hispanic. Okay. And uh -huh. the DJ was actually Italian and um, Italian and Japanese. <laughs> Michelangelo was the DJ. Oh, wow. The, music, the Renaissance. <laughs> right. <laughs> who played the music um, that made whacking what it is. And the music plays a big role in whacking. We can talk about that um, as well. But it, it, was, uh, it was born in gay clubs. Tyrone Proctor, who is my teacher, who you got to meet, who passed away sadly. No, I did get ago. to meet him at your house. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was like the original teacher who taught you, right? Yes. Yes. He was the one who really, I guess, he was the biggest catalyst of the resurgence. You know, because he brought back the history. We started learning the dance in, uh, in at the Broadway Dance Center in the early 2000s with Brian Footwork Green, who was a brilliant dancer, choreographer, and Tyrone came along and he shared the history. He explained to us why this dance is what it is and gave it meaning. And he really empowered us to be ourselves and helped bring out the individuality in each of us. So I owe my entire life to him. And he he um you know he was the one who really brought whacking to Poe Train. Wow, okay, so it started in Soul Train. Like I said, there's theories that, you know, there's probably, there's theories about it being eliminated by culture. Mm -hmm. Not eliminated, but it- I mean, it died out. You know, the dance, yeah. it, it, it was very, it, it reached a certain level of popularity, but it, it never really became as popular as locking, which was another dance of the time, which was done to, you know, the, the group, the lockers, they would come on and they would have the stripes and the hats and um, that dance style really, really took off in the 70s. Whacking didn't get that kind of spotlight, you know, mm. and if- um, What did? What did? Yeah. Uh, locking and popping. Locking and popping were, were two funk dance styles that were done to funk music. Um, mm. Locking was done to funk music like James Brown, um, popping is done to funk music, kind of like Zapp and Roger with like a little bit harder hit, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and there was mm -hmm. a group called the Electric Boogaloos for oh, popping. Really? There was a group called the Lockers. Who, who lockers. played the song that I played in the beginning? You said that was like the whacking so, anthem. So, yeah, so whacking music is actually, it's European. European disco. Uh -huh. I mean, even Donna Summers, you know, she recorded a lot of her music in Germany. The, so uh -huh. a lot of the classic whacking music is right. imported from Europe. And the music is so important because when you listen to classic disco, mm -hmm. you will notice that there are so many instruments and it's also live. This is before there was, you know, drum machines. It was all analog. There were, there, and it was orchestral. It, it was orchestral. There was, there was an orchestra in, in a disc, a disco band isn't just like a five piece band. It's a full on orchestra with strings, Amazing. horns and timpani. So all those, different dynamics in the music gives the dancers so much to play with when they're accenting the sounds in the music. And that's really what whacking is. When you whack, you make people see the music. See the music. Okay. So let's, so a lot of people like Legendary is the big show on mm -hmm. HBO Max and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people know about Pose, which was basically the fictionalized version of uh, Paris is Burning, which was ballroom culture in the 80s, right? Yeah, yeah. So this was before posing, voguing, like remember the Madonna yeah. song Vogue? Like, yeah, that, of course. So, you right? know, a lot of people confuse whacking and voguing and to an untrained eye, they might look very similar because they both have a lot of arm movements. And they did mm -hmm. both um, stem from gay black culture. However, mm -hmm. they, stem, they birthed in completely different eras. Whacking was the 70s in California. Voguing was the 80s in New York. Mm -hmm. Whacking was inspired by movie stars like Greta Garbo and Marilyn Monroe, Marlena Dietrich, the, the Hollywood actresses. And it was inspired by disco music, which again is that live orchestral music with all those sounds. And the vocals are very important. Voguing was originated to electronic music when house music first started becoming oh, really? created. And there was disco samples in some of the early Vogue music. But a ball is a competition. It's uh -huh. always been a battle. And the houses are like these families or, you know, as, as described in Paris is Burning, they were like gangs and they would come to the ball and that's how they would battle it out with each other. Whacking was never like that. You know, there right. were dance contests in the 70s, but it wasn't like a dance battle with a specific style, you know, and those dance contests would sometimes happen in the clubs, but 
underground in the underground gay clubs whacking was really more about just loving yourself it wasn't like i'm you know sure of course there was attitude you know but, but let me ask you a question there's if you watch pose you see that there is a large or there was and i still think well obviously legendary there, there are balls now or maybe it was a resurgence a lot of transgender in sure. the who were part of it. Were there transgender sure. whackers or was it mainly just- I've never heard men? of any transgender whackers in the 70s being originators. The originators that I have heard from my teacher and mm -hmm. you know, they were all gay men, gay mm -hmm. black and Hispanic men, but I never heard of anybody being transgender. Um, but I'm sure that there were trans people in the community you know, um, there were drag queens for sure. I mean, drag is another thing that really inspired, inspired whacking. You know, whacking is almost like doing a drag performance, but without lip syncing. You have to perform and you have to ah, tell the story. And that's and what you would did. See, right. And they would right, see the drag so. queens before the club opened up and then they would dance and imitate what they saw dancing. Okay. So I got two questions and then we yeah. have to move on to Michael. Number sure. one, why whacking for you? Well, you know, I mean, you could, you're very talented out of all you. the dance movements. Why whack? Right. I think it was my calling. You know, I was, before I started dancing, you know, I reached a low point. I was depressed. I didn't have confidence and whacking really, really helped that. You know, when I created Princess Lockaroo, this character, it's like my alter ego. It's like my superhero. And whenever I step into I mean, Princess Lockaroo, I'm a whole other person. I'm a totally, I become this diva. I'm fearless and nothing can stop me. And I think that because whacking is about being yourself and not about just looking like everybody else, it gave me the opportunity to embrace my uniqueness and really accept who I am. So it's a journey of self-discovery and, and seeing how I can change, how I can affect people's lives. You know, speaking about culture, I mean, I've traveled to 26 countries around the world teaching whacking, China being one of the places that I go to the most often. And I've been to so many different cities in China, all over Asia, and whacking is becoming very popular in countries where women are not, are not really encouraged to be outgoing and be divas, you know, mm. and it's, 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 I really feel like it's creating cultural change around the world, also within the gay community, because whacking is now done underneath the hip hop umbrella at hip hop dance battles around the world whereas they used to be straight male dominated now you see gay people at these events and you see women coming out dressed as women being themselves not trying to masculinize themselves you know to to, to get street cred so is that why you would say like why now is there huge i mean it's it was huge i mean a lot of people don't get newspapers now it was like what a spread <laughs> on you and whacking why? Yeah. why why are you why is whacking so relevant right now well, I think because it's more than just a dance. Number one, it's unique history is so meaningful. And the fact that it's, um, it's transforming people's lives. You know, the way that I describe it is when you physically embody, in order to do the dance, you have to be a diva. You have to embody confidence. So when you, when you embody that confidence and the physical repetition of that will allow that feeling to live inside your body and become your reality. So it really is helping people on a spiritual level, on an emotional level. And I think that that's what we need right now. Just like you said, there's, there's a renaissance is on the rise. And I think whacking is going to be a big part of that. All right. We got to end with the last zeitgeisty subject. And then Michael, you just came on, right? Are you there, Michael? Okay, good. Michael uh, came on a little late. So uh, it's good that I'm running late. <laughs> uh, so TikTok, right? Yeah in very short soundbite, why don't you tell everybody your perspective, what TikTok is, and how does it coincide with the whacking phenomenon? TikTok is inspiring people to be creative using whatever it is that they have around them. You can't leave the house, you can order stuff on Amazon, but you can't have this social experience that you normally would. With TikTok, you can. And great great been, answer, by the way. I know I probably put you on the spot now that I think yeah. about it. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's social media and it's problematic right now because our president said that because a Chinese company owns it. I, I read something today that like 90% of TikTok users would drop off if it was banned. 
here in the United States. So mm. we got to do everything in our power to preserve it because clearly it's a great art form. I talked about how Gen Z's are gaming the system, right? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So last thing I got to tell everybody is that you're here to teach everybody. I knew we wanted to, well, if we have time in the end, we'll talk about what we said because we got to start, you know, talking to Michael. But uh, you give lessons, people can follow you, we can learn about whacking. I think, like you said, a cultural renaissance, mental health is on the rise, we need more positivity in our lives, and you created an art, you didn't create it, but you preserved and are proselytizing an art form that could really help us be happy and confident with ourselves. So thank you, first of all. Why don't you put your information in the chat? 